What's up, football fans? Yes, you're in the right place. I say that every single week. Thanks for hanging with us. You're watching FanDuel TV's More Ways to Win. It's week 11 of this NFL season. There are some huge games on the schedule this week, and you know what we do. We're breaking down and betting all of the biggest matchups. We're handing out our best bets and, of course, dropping DFS plays for you as well. I'm Lisa Kearney hanging out with you here from the FanDuel Sportsbook at the Meadowlands in New Jersey. Uh, but I'll tell you what, all the way across the country, we've got our real ringers holding it down. Uh, hello, gentlemen. All of you get in here. I need my team. Our sports betting expert, Dave Weaver, former NFL wideout and Super Bowl champ James Jones. They're in our L.A. studio. Hello, guys. Sports Talk Radio host Andrew Filipponi joining us from Pittsburgh, as always, and the face of Marquee Sports Network. Our NFL expert, Cole Wright, is in Chicago. Guys, it's week 11. So much to get to here. Let's kick this thing off. More Ways to Win starts now. <laughs> All right, we got to get right to the huge NFC matchup here in Minnesota. The 6-3 and three Cowboys at the 8-1 and one Minnesota Vikings. These two teams coming off completely opposite games here. The Vikings came back from that 17-point deficit in the third quarter for that crazy overtime win at Buffalo. And for the Cowboys, Dallas was up 14 in the third, ended up losing in overtime. Two totally opposite ends here coming into this game. Guys, check out the line for this one. Dallas is a one-and-a-half point favorite in Minnesota. Dave, coming right to you, what do you make of this line? Yeah, well, uh, it's a real tight spread, which means it's going to be a close game. And who's the best team in the NFL at winning close games? Mm. It's the Minnesota Vikings. Right. As a matter of fact, they have won seven straight games. They're on a seven-game winning streak, and every one of those wins has been by one possession or less. So seven straight wins, eight points or less, and the way they did it in thrilling fashion last week, uh, radio play-by-play -play man Paul Allen, his call has gone viral for the Minnesota Vikings, and I think they're going to win another close one here. A lot of people will say, Pony, look, you can't continue to win games like this. Eventually, that's just not going to hold up, but I'm sitting here the other way. Here's a team that knows how to win the close ones, and they're going to do that again against the Cowboys. Yeah, I actually look at it in a very similar way to you, Dave, that the Vikings underachieved in the first half of the season, but they still managed to win those games while they were struggling. On paper, they're a great team. They held the Bills to only six points in the second half in overtime, no touchdowns. And look at this matchup. The Cowboys, Micah Parsons in this defense, they get a lot of love, but they are 29th against the run. Dalvin Cook, one of the better running backs with a really good offensive line. Dak Prescott this year, six touchdowns to four interceptions. He has not looked sharp since he came back from that finger injury I love the Vikings. This line is stunning. I'm definitely betting them on the money line. I, I talked to about 20 different friends, Lisa, and I said, what's this line going to be? They all said Minnesota minus three, minus four. So the question is, does FanDuel know more than we do? Like, why is Dallas favored in this game? <laughs> yep. I, I can tell you, I know more than you what's going on with that stash right there. Full stop. <laughs> hey, can you, you just noticed. share with the people what the heck is going on right there? <laughs> it's beautiful. <laughs> um, all right. It's it's glorious, by the way. Uh, great stuff, you guys. Now I want to get our former players perspective here and pick, of course, James. We saw what happened last week. We just broke it down. The Vikings come from behind, pull off that crazy overtime win, mm -hmm. got the Cowboys blowing that big lead in to yeah. lose in overtime. How does each team now keep their emotions in check for this game? And who do you see coming out on the right side? Well, this, yeah, this is that's a really good question, Lisa. And this is this is too really good things right here, right? Because you come off a loss, right? So now the Dallas Cowboys, it's really a sense of urgency, right? You come off a loss feeling like a game that you gave up, right? So you're going to go in, you're going to prepare, you're going to make sure you fix those little mistakes that you that happened in that, in that Packers game, and you're going to come out with a sense of urgency. Now the other side, the Minnesota Vikings coming off a real, real high, right? Beating arguably the best team, everybody's Super Bowl favorite. You go down there, you're making big time plays, Justin Jefferson, Kirk Cousins making crazy throws. Patrick Peterson ending that game with an interception of Josh Allen. Like, you're riding this wave right now, and you're up at the top on the high. I want to see how they respond. And for me, Lisa, I know why that spread is like that, because 
I truly believe if both teams play their best, the Dallas Cowboys win this game. I truly believe the Dallas Cowboys are a better team than the Minnesota Vikings. I tell people all the time, right, you need luck in this league, right? You do not win Super Bowls. You do not win close games without a little bit of luck. I feel like that luck is about to run out for Minnesota. The last time the Cowboys went up there with Cooper Rush, right, they, they put a beating on, on the Minnesota Vikings. I think it's going to happen again, and I think Dak gets back to Dak and plays really good football. Maybe the Vikings peaking too early. You call that a wave. The wave's got another side to it, by the way. Uh, all right, you guys, great stuff. Let's keep this thing moving. We've got to get to these 8-1 Eagles traveling to Indianapolis to take on the 4-5-1 Colts here. Saw the Eagles lose their first game of the season on Monday night. Time of possession. Maybe you were watching that game and you felt it completely lopsided with Philly offense on the field for less than 20 minutes while scoring just 21 points. It's their second lowest total of the season. So they're coming off of that. And how about Jeff Saturday and these Colts? The new interim head coach put Matt Ryan back under center. Focus that offense around Jonathan Taylor, and thank you for that. He's my fantasy running back. Uh, most attempts and yards since week one. He absolutely came out and balled, resulted in a 25-20 win in Vegas. Guys, let's bet this one. Cole, Philly, six-and-a-half-point road favorite. Can they cover that number? Lisa, I couldn't believe the number, and I also couldn't believe that uh, Weaver's still growing that mustache. And I also couldn't believe that he has 20 friends. That's unbelievable <laughs> in and of itself. But uh, I really can't wait to watch the Jeff Saturday story on the Hallmark Channel next Christmas time because the Colts, they rallied for their new head coach. We know that, and they played to their potential. They have a top 10 passing offense to go along with that number 10 ranked defense. But uh, they should give Philly problems, right? Well, maybe not so much because I don't think that's going to happen. Philly, they had a barbershop quartet of turnovers uh, versus Washington. That was their worst showing of the entire season. And I've seen eight games prior to that that show me that's not going to happen again. Now, Indy, they've allowed a running back to go for 100 or more yards in a game only twice this season, and that was Derrick Henry. We know that guy's as big as all outside. And the last time Miles Sanders had 100-plus in a game, the Eagles – well, they snagged themselves an eight-point win, and I think it's going to be much bigger than this on Sunday. It's going to be a 10-point W. Miles Sanders is going to lead into the promised land. 31-21. I'm looking at it the other way, Cole, and what, oh. what Philadelphia does when they can't stop a running game, and in this case, it's going to be Jonathan Taylor. Last week, Washington went for 152 yards in the ground. Houston, two weeks back, 160. Pittsburgh, 144. They're not stopping the run. And here are the facts about Jonathan Taylor. When he gets 100 yards, or for that matter, even 90 yards, they don't lose. The Colts are 15-1-1. I looked up every one of his games, going back to his rookie season. 90 yards or more, 15-1-1. And guess what? He's back. He had 147 last week, and he's going to put up 90 in this game. And who would have thought that Matt Ryan would have more rushing yards last week than Jalen Hurts? Matty Ice ripping off a 39-yarder. Jalen Hurts, relatively no, no running game at all, playing from behind against Washington last weekend. And I think the bubble may have burst here for the Eagles. They lost one game. Maybe they can even lose two in a row. I put them on upset alert here. I like the Colts. Ooh, putting them on Interesting. upset alert. And you're I mean, you're catching a Colts team that has been reinvigorated. Uh, James, want to get your player perspective here. The Eagles, we yeah. talked about it, 8-0 before taking that first loss on Monday night. You were on a Packers team that started 13-0 and <laughs> back in 2011 before yeah, you lost yeah. their, your first game. What was your mindset, though, after that game? And uh, did you feel like maybe there was a little less pressure? It, it definitely was a little bit of less pressure. I'm not even going to lie, right? And it's crazy because as you're going on that win streak, obviously all the questions are, you know what I mean, are you guys going to go undefeated? Can you do it and all that? And we never talked about it, right? We never talked about it in a team meeting. We never talked about it amongst players, right? But we did feel the pressure as you kept winning, like, man, we are close. 13-0, we are close. And that week that we were about to play the Kansas City Chiefs, we came into the team meeting and Coach Mike McCarthy said, fellas, we are going for it. We are trying to go undefeated. And it kind of was like a weight lifted off our shoulders. Like, finally, we could talk about it and tell the media we're going undefeated. And that next game, we went out and got slapped by the Kansas City Chiefs, right? And there was no more talk about it. But it was kind of like a woo-saw. That's done. I don't have to answer any more questions about undefeated. Now it's just about the goal that we, we set out in the first place anyway, and that's to win the Super Bowl. So I feel Philly. No more questions about undefeated. It's over, but I am looking. 
game, uh, how they bounce back in this game. And I'm with Cole. I think they bounce back big. I think the Jeff Saturday trade is going to catch a big loss in this one. I see the Philadelphia Eagles winning this one big. And I'm saying okay. big, 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 31-14 Eagles. Ooh. Total blowout. Okay, a little reality check maybe for the Colts after that, it, you know, big welcome for Jeff Saturday last week. All right, you guys. Uh, hey, James, you just mentioned the Chiefs. Let's get to their big AFC West matchup here. The 7-2 and two Chiefs are in Los Angeles to take on the 5-4 and four Chargers here. Patrick Mahomes is on fire, leading the league in passing yards and passing touchdowns. He's a huge favorite at the FanDuel Sportsbook to win regular season MVP. As for the Chargers... They've got that winning record overall, but are 0-3 against teams with winning records, including that Week 2 loss at Kansas City. Uh, guys, let's do what we do. Pony and Cole, Chiefs are a 5.5-point yeah. road favorite on Sunday night football. Pony, do you think that number's too high for them on the road? I don't. You start with Mahomes against the AFC West and assume victory. He's 23-3 and all-time against the AFC West, and this line is still within a touchdown. It's not seven, it's not six, it's five and a half. The Chargers issue in this game, as I see it, is that they don't have anybody healthy up front. They've got three defensive linemen. That's it. Bosa's not gonna come back and play in this game. Their wide receivers might be healthy, Lisa, but with no pass rush, we saw the chemistry between Mahomes and Kadarius Tony. What a smooth, savvy pickup by the Chiefs to bring him in from the Giants. And I think they cover easily in L.A. Oh. a double-digit victory Ooh. for Lisa Kearney's Chiefs. Cole Wright. Oh, Pony, I'm right there with you because every single one of the Bolts wins. They've come versus sub-500 teams, and uh, they've beaten nobody. So I'm not even going to waste my breath talking about them right now. But uh, this one it has to have Kansas City written all over because Patrick Mahomes with his new toy on display last week. Pony, like you said, Kadarius, Tony, 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 90 scrimmage yards total. It definitely will rain wherever he's at. Not talking about Southern California. His first touchdown as a chief put it. Patrick Mahomes five ahead of Josh Allen. He has the lead lead at 25. And I guess what I told everybody before the season, offensive rookie of the year would be Isaiah Pacheco. Hasn't got off to a rip roaring start, but he got the lion's share last week in the Bolts. They have a lot of trouble stopping the run. They're sloppy, and that's going to allow Travis Kelsey to open up that passing game because Derwin James and company, they spent all last week trying to contain George Kittle, and they did a good job of that. But this week, it's going to be a whole bunch different. Kansas City, I think they're going to cruise in this one, 28-21, Pony. I know you like it. Mm. Yeah. Mm. You well, know, Cole's in the Cole's in the KC fit right there. <laughs> Come on, James. Yep. Make it three for uh, three, baby. Let's, get, <laughs> let's go, James. Well, yeah, James, I mean, let's talk about it because you played with Brett Favre. Yeah. You played with Aaron Rodgers during your time in Green Bay. Yeah. What do you see in Patrick Mahomes? Let's start there that has him playing at such a high level. Well, number one, he's extremely smart, right? You see him, I mean, he knows what the defense is doing before they even do it in film study. I mean, obviously, Eric Bieniemy and Andy Reid got him dialed in. But on top of him being extremely smart and knowing what's coming before it's coming, right, you just can't teach the stuff that Patty Mahomes has. Patty Mahomes is a special thrower of the football. I truly believe in my heart Aaron Rodgers is the greatest thrower of the football I've ever seen, and Patty Mahomes is pushing him right now because Patty Mahomes is absolutely special and at that quarterback position when you can make any and every throw in the pocket outside the pocket on the run behind the back no look that is a quarterback and then you see Tony come over for the Giants and automatically look like a superstar that is what great quarterbacks do they make sure they get everybody involved and spin it around to everybody he is fun to watch and he's gonna be fun to watch for a long time but Lisa cover your ears because you Stop have Keenan Allen coming back. You have Mike Williams coming back. And I know Pony said, hey, no protection. And that's why these guys right here. Yeah, Cole, get out of there. That's why these guys right here are going to be big in this game right here. Keenan Allen, separation immediately. Oh. Mike Williams, you don't even need some time. Just throw it up. He always comes out with some touchdowns against the Kansas City Chiefs, mossing people, right? And then Austin Eckler out the backfield. But the equalizer in this, right, it is always a battle. I, I truly believe Travis Kelsey has when he sees Derwin James 
on his schedule. I like the Chargers in this one. At home, I'm taking Derwin James, Khalil Mack. I'm taking Keenan Allen and Mike Williams to get this one done. And I'm not going to say I told you so because I had all the poop emojis uh, last show when I took the commandos <laughs> to beat the Eagles, but we'll talk about that later. But I'm taking the Chargers in this one right wow. here. Listen, I respectfully disagree, <laughs> but it's why we play the game. Uh, all right, great stuff from all you guys. We have plenty more picks coming up on the show. But first, a quick reminder for all of you at home about FanDuel's special no-sweat first bet promotion. FanDuel is giving new customers up to $1,000 back if you don't win your first bet. I call it the best mulligan in the business. I love this. New users can take advantage of the no-sweat first bet. Just place a cash bet with FanDuel Sportsbook. If you don't win your first bet, you're going to automatically get your stake back in free bets. It's that easy. So download the app and play with us today. And we even throw the QR code right there for you to make it even easier. All right, everybody, coming up, your new favorite segment, Dave's Big Payday Parlay. He's got an eight-legger that could turn a few dollars into a few thousand. Stay right there. We're coming right back. And we're rolling on here on more ways to win. Underdogs, favorites, which one should you bet? Well, the answer is both. You just have to find the best value, and that's why we're coming in hot with all that. We're giving out our best bets for each and this week's Dog and Pony show. Uh, guys, I love this new segment. Pony is playing the part of Pony. There you go. Our special guest, Chad Millman, will be bringing the dogs. Great having Chad back with us here. Chief Content Officer of the Action Network, Chad Hold on to your picks for just a second. I'm going to come to you in a moment. Uh, Pony, need to shout you out for hitting both of your favorite picks last week. You got the Bucks and the Dolphins. So start us off here with a favorite favorite you have for week 11. Well, I'm going back to a pick from a few weeks ago. Give me the Patriots against the Jets here. They won the first matchup. They held New York to 51 rushing yards. They picked up. They picked off Zach Wilson three times. Matthew Jude on this defense. They're humming 11 and a half sacks. Bill Belichick has won 13 games in a row against the New York Jets. I think that trend continues. Small line in Foxborough. Take New England. Yeah, I like that one. Chad, what about an underdog you like this week? I will look, I will say I don't want to mush Pony's pick, but I love the Patriots in this spot as well. <laughs> My underdog pick, the first dog that I want to talk about, are the Houston Texans plus three and a half at home against the Washington Commanders. You're just getting some inflation in this line. It's going to be a, pla a classic pros-Joes game where the professionals are going to be on the Texans. The Joes, the public, are going to be on the Washington Commanders. Last week, the Texans outplayed the Giants. They average six yards per play. Again, the Giants get lucky by playing a team that has troubles in the red zone. Two turnovers in the red zone for the Texans. Two field goals from red zone possessions for the Texans. This is a team that going against a commander's team that is going to have so much love because the line is going to be a little bit higher based on what they did against the Eagles. You're going to get some value. So take the home dogs, take the Texans, plus three and a half. I'm with you on Washington. Uh, inflation after that Monday night football uh, win over those Eagles. Pony, give me your second favorite favorite here for week 11. Monday night game, the Niners. I was disappointed in what they did against the Chargers. They could not punch it into cover late in that game. I think they will against Arizona. This game's in Mexico City, so it's neutral site. And I just don't know what the heck the Cardinals are doing at quarterback. Is it an injured Kyler Murray? Is it an injured Colt McCoy? Either way, we're talking about quarterbacks at less than 100%. Like, I'm just waiting for this Niners team, healthy with McCaffrey, to prove to everybody that they are a great team. And I think it happens Monday night. A big number for a reason. Take San Francisco in a neutral site game against the Cards. Okay, Chad, coming right back to you. Give me another underdog that you like here. All right, so Lisa, this has been the year of the dogs, and I think we've all seen that. And here's a stat that quantifies it. Dogs between 3 and 10 points whose record is worse than their opponents are covering at a 71% clip this Ooh. season. Chicago Bears against the Atlanta Falcons fit that bill. The Bears defense can't stop anybody, but nobody can stop the Bears offense either. They are scoring 29 points per game. 
the last four games. They are playing against a secondary that is beat up. They are playing against a pass rush in the Falcons that has the lowest pass rush rate in the NFL. The one thing that troubles Justin Fields is the pass rush, and the Falcons cannot do that. So how are they going to stop Justin Fields, who plays very well as a passer against no pass rush, and if they aren't spying him, is going to run all over the field? I have a very hard time seeing the Falcons scoring enough to cover a a three-and-a-half point spread against the Bears in this game. I will take the trend. I will take the bias. I will take the Bears, plus three, plus three-and-a-half. All right, uh, let's recap these picks here for everyone at home. Pony, quick recap here. Your two favorites. You like the Patriots giving the points to the Jets. The Niners giving the points to the Cardinals. That is a big line sitting there at eight and a half. Uh, Chad, here's a look at your dogs. You are backing the Texans getting points against the Commanders. Also, as you just mentioned, the Bears getting the points against the Falcons. Awesome stuff, guys. You can bet these dogs and favorites right now on the FanDuel Sportsbook app. Or, hey, get here to New Jersey, here to the Meadowlands of the FanDuel Sportsbook. Uh, you can get more of Chad's insight by listening to the Favorites podcast wherever you get your podcast. Also, make sure to download the Action Network app for expert picks, live scores, and stats. Thanks, guys. And, Chad, always good to see you. All right, moving on here. And now it is time for Dave's Big Payday Parlay. Nope. It is pretty self-explanatory. <laughs> yep, you've heard people betting just a few dollars to win thousands. Mm. Well, Big Parlay Bet is how they do it. Dave is going to run us through. What do we have, 20 legs today? Only how many legs here for week 11? 11 legs? Only eight. You know, hope springs eternal. Every Sunday morning <laughs> we wake up with a chance to turn $20 into stacks. Ooh. We're going to do that again this Sunday. So let's start. We're going to play an 18 money line parlay. No spreads involved. Teams just need to win. We're going to start with the Colts pulling off the Ooh, upset over with the Eagles. Okay. Jonathan Taylor is going to run it there we for go. over 100 yards in that game. So we're already up to uh, 68 bucks on one play. When you see the total at the end, don't faint. Okay, mm. this is a big one. Uh, the Jets on the road, 4-0 this year. They're going to go into New England and pull off the upset. You're feeling good. So you feeling good right already. now, Dave. Uh, the Bears, you know, I, I don't think the Atlanta defense is going to be able to stop oh, yeah. them. No. They're yeah. another underdog. Justin so Fields on a whole different level. Three teams already were up to over $400. When you get your full honey. Your Raiders. Yes. Desperate need of a morale-boosting victory. They'll beat the Broncos in Denver. There we go. We're almost at $900. Flip the page. We'll play the next four teams. Vikings beat Dallas in a close one. You're taking a close one again, 1,800 for five teams. Uh. Now let's talk about divisional games where favorites are going to blow it. You know what? Cincinnati going to Pittsburgh. I'll take the underdog in these divisional matchups all day long. Now we're up to five grand with two more teams to go. Your Chargers uh-huh. and my Chargers to beat the Chiefs. Another divisional dog. Yes. Now we're up to 18,000. Yes. All Ooh. of that 18,000 is going on the biggest God. divisional dog of the week. The Cardinals will beat the 49ers. The last three times Man. we've had a divisional dog yeah. of a touchdown or more, they've all won. Yeah. Washington last week over Ooh. Philly. The Jets beat the Bills. $72,000, Lisa. $20 bill. Bet. Talk to me in my ear if I can make this bet. Can I make this bet? Because I want to put my I 20 mean, up to win this. 72 grand. Ooh. That lips, you lost me at the lip sweater. And then <laughs> at the end, you sound like a used car salesman. That could like, I can't with you today, Dave. You, <laughs> you end on the Chiefs. Come on now. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, I'll take that. So what is it, 72? That's all. 72K? Ooh. I'll take that. We'll yeah, go have some fun. You're going to get your right, cheese for 72,000. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, a bad day here and there. Might as well just be this week. All right, you guys, uh, look at those odds skyrocket. Dave, you rocked it out. You tell Dave or, hey, create your own parlay to win big on the FanDuel Sportsbook app. I just mentioned it. He did eight legs there. You could do 11 for week 11. You could get up to 20, however many. Just uh, have a ton of fun there on the FanDuel Sportsbook app. And you can also get in on the fun with Daily Fantasy as well. You already know this. FanDuel has a bunch of DFS contests live right now where you can win thousands of dollars on FanDuel.com. The key, of course, to success is value at each position. So that's when we bring in our ringer, Jim Sonis, the senior writer and analyst for Number Fire. He's got his best value plays here for week 11. Hey, Jim. 
basically it's a lot of bad weather on the main slate in week 11 so i want to go indoors for all three of our value plays that begins at tight end with dalton schultz coming in at fifty nine hundred dollars had a good target share for the cowboys recently a 21 percent share since dak prescott's return with 36 percent inside the red zone so schultz has both yardage and touch on upside it helps fill tight end pretty tough to say no to that we got david montgomery coming in at sixty two hundred dollars filling in with khalil herbert on ir now montgomery had a pretty good role er earlier on this year before herbert's emergence and i was expecting to go back in that role here in this Bears offense playing much better now than they were back then. So Montgomery facing off with the Falcons, a key place to turn to for this week. Finally, a wide receiver, Devontae Smith. There's no Dallas Goddard for this week for the Eagles. It opens up a lot of targets in this offense, and Devontae Smith was getting a lot of work even before that. 24% target share in the game Smith has played with Goddard so far this year. This game is also indoors. Devontae Smith, similar to Schultz, has both yardage and touchdown upside. So, Lisa, we're staying indoors, but getting three guys who should get a lot of looks in week number 11. Thank you, Jim. Awesome as always. Set your lineups at FanDuel.com and also follow Jim on Twitter at Jim Saunas. Check out his Covering the Spread podcast. It is awesome wherever you get your podcasts. All right, Jim, thank you so much. Up next, best bets of the week. I know it's what you're all here for. Our experts reveal one spread, one money line, one total they're backing this week, plus a round-robin New York betting frenzy. Our experts take on our ex-player, picking the Bills, Giants, and Jets games work. Coming right back. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to more ways to win here on FanDuel TV. It is time for our betting experts to take on our ex player in a betting debate based on eye test and experience. Each of our betting experts are going to go toe to toe with James. You guys know this by now. Nine year NFL veteran, Super Bowl champion. They're going to state their case, stand by their story. We're going to settle up next week. That's the drill. All right, this week we've got a special New York version of expert versus X player, and we're starting with the six and three Jets at the five and four Patriots. Guys, the Jets have dropped 13 straight in this series. We've already talked about on this show, including a 22 17 loss in week eight. That loss is their only one in the last six games. How does that play? We'll see. The Patriots have won four of five with their defense absolutely dominating. They're giving up less than 10 points per game during that streak. Dave, the Jets are a three-and-a-half-point road underdog. You're up. Well, you know whose defense is dominating? The Jets. Oh. I, I think a lot of uh, people out there are not really giving them enough credit for how good they've been this year, being able to beat the Bills in their most recent game back in week number nine. Then they had a nice chance to kind of get healthy over the bye week. Look, they haven't lost yet on the road this year. They're 4-0 on the road, and even though they did lose to the Patriots at home, by five points. Zach Wilson threw three interceptions in that game and they lost by five. To me, if he can just protect the ball, and that's not going to be an easy thing for him to do. He's still young, going to make some mistakes, but if they don't turn the ball over, they're not going to lose this game. I am not impressed with the Patriots' offense. I'm very impressed with the Jets' defense. I think the Jets win this one in a low-scoring game, and I'm getting the hook with, with the three and a half points, so even if they lose by a field goal, we're going to get the cover, so I'm taking the Jets. Dave, Dave, Give him some Dave, respect. Dave, Dave, Dave. I'm trying, right? But when they play Bill Belichick and that defense, he has every Jets quarterback seeing ghost. Everyone. Now, Sam Darnold, no matter who run out there, Zach Wilson does not play good against Bill Belichick. That's the problem. It's not their defense. It's the leader. It's Zach Wilson. He does not put up points. He does not play well. He turns the football over. They get after him. And now you have to play this game in New England coming off of a bye, and you think you're going to beat Bill Belichick, the New York Jets, and he's beat you 13 straight times? No, this is not happening. Bill Belichick and this defense is going to get after Zach Wilson like it always does, like it gets after every Jets quarterback, and they are going to win this game and give the Jets another loss, and the Jets going to be looking up in that division. Okay, our next New York team, let's get right to it. The 6-3 and three Bills host the 3-6 and six Browns. Buffalo started 6-1. and one. They've lost two straight, but both of those games by just three points, guys. Cleveland has lost five of six, six, five of six. But, hey, Nick Chubb is having a fantastic year. He's third in yards, first in rushing touchdowns. Pony, the Bills are giving seven and a half. Mm. It's a big line. Yeah, and at the time of this conversation, it looks like we're going to have a weather game. There's a thunder snow alert in Buffalo, and that would favor the Browns because oh. of what you just said, Lisa. Nick Chubb, 
5.7 yards per carry. The Bills' best runner is Josh Allen. Uh, Naheem Hines didn't have a rushing attempt last game. Uh, Devin Singletary's coming off a game where he was under 50 yards again. I just think that if the weather is a factor, which it may be in this game, you really need to take the Browns plus seven and a half. It would remind me, James, of when New England went into Buffalo last year and just ran the ball the entire time and actually beat him in that game. You know what, Pony? You're exactly right, right? And it's tough for me to go against Buffalo at home, and I know the weather is going to be nasty and all that, but you're exactly right. If this is a game where there's a bunch of snow on the ground and you shoveling that snow off the field, the Buffalo Bills cannot run the football. And if this becomes a run game, you got to go with the Cleveland Browns, right? You got to go with Kareem Hunt. You got to go with Nick Chubb. They run the football extremely well. It's going to be tough to tackle Nick Chubb in that snow, Kareem Hunt in that snow. But with all that being said, Buffalo is not about to drop another one at home. It's just not going to happen. I don't care how they got to get it done. I don't care if they're at practice right now designing a hundred run plays for Josh Allen. They have to figure out a way to run the ball. I think that defense steps up. The defense that we think they could be with Von Miller, I think they find a way and gut one out in this nasty weather and win this game at home. All right, Nicole, you're tapping in for Pony here on this one. Our last New York team is the 7-2 and two Giants. What a season so far for these G-men. And running back Saquon Barkley leads the NFL in rushing, coming off a game with 35 carries. That is a career high for him. Uh, usage is up for Saquon. The Giants faces 3-6 and six Lions, whose defense giving up the most yards and points in this league. Cole, the Giants are three-point mm-hmm. favorites. Kind of a small line for me. What do you yeah, think? Huh? Well, well, maybe there'll be some lake effect snow <laughs> that doesn't happen in New York. But e- either way, a weather could play a part in this one because uh, Detroit, the run defense, absolute sewer city. They've allowed 375 rushing yards the last two weeks combined. And uh, Lisa, like you said, Saquon Barkley, the guy is an absolute beast. Over 100 plus rushing yards in two of his last three games. And Big Blue, they know who they are. They're going to run the ball and they're going to keep it close because every game but one so far for the Giants well, decided by eight points or fewer. We're going to have more of the same on Sunday. Giants win this one 24-17, James. Yeah, and that, and that concerns me, right? And they are finding ways. Kudos to the coaching staff. Kudos to Daniel Jones because they are finding ways to win close games. And that's the National Football League, right? It always is going to come down to these one-score games, right, that really makes the difference in your season. I think the luck runs out. And Giants fan, I'm sorry. You could call me crazy, but I'm just not a believer in Daniel Jones and the Giants. I think they have a lot of luck on their side right now. They, ha- they got out played by the Houston Texans last weekend, right? The Houston Texans had an opportunity to win that game. The Detroit Lions, this is going to be their first time in a long time, winning three straight football games. I believe that they are going to get this done. A couple takeaways, get that ball back to the offense. I like Jared Goff and the Detroit Lions to get this one done. Uh, Cole, I'm not a fan or a believer in the New York Giants. I'm disgusted by you, James. Okay, on the road. <laughs> <laughs> Even on the road. Okay. Uh, great stuff by you guys. And as I mentioned, the Giants are at home this week, which, you know, means the Meadowlands are going to be absolutely rocking. So if you're headed to MetLife Stadium or, hey, just looking for a fun spot to take in all the games this NFL Sunday, this is it. Take a look around. And we're going to show you inside the sportsbook right now. The FanDuel Sportsbook located, as I mentioned, just across the parking lot from MetLife Stadium. It is the best spot to hang before during, after all the games this week. And as you can see, here's why. Come cheer on your favorite teams and players while enjoying food, beverage, placing quick bets on dozens of self-betting machines. And friendly windows are open as well. I know some of you prefer that as opposed to those betting machines. So grab your friends and family. Come out here for an awesome time on Sunday or, hey, any day of the week. It's the FanDuel Sportsbook here at the Meadowlands, located right across the parking lot from MetLife Stadium. This is your personal invitation to come join us here. All right, now let's get back to our bets, and here uh, are our best bets. As usual, our experts are giving them out in the form of a spread, money line, and total bet. So got to get our guys back in here as part of our weekly competition where each of our guys gets 100 virtual dollars to place those three bets. Dave, full stop. To give you the props that you need. You hit on two of your three bets. You only cash enough for a a gas station coffee and a donut. But, hey, winning is winning, right? I'll take that. Profit, (laughs) baby. All right. Well, keep it going. Uh, Tell me where you're putting your money this week. 
All right, that's last week. So yeah. Oh, sorry, we actually get to go over it. Yeah, thank yeah, you. The Bills, you know, the Vikings did their thing. I blew a 17-point lead for the broom. But Pony had swept two consecutive weeks. So kudos to him, but I had to win one week, and we'll see if I can do it again. Let's flip the page to week number 11. I'm going to start with the Jets, and I, I believe that this is a very good line getting the hook with that three and a half. I think they're going to win the game, but if they don't, they'll lose by a field goal. $55 to win 50 on them. As far as my money line bet, the Colts to pull off the upset. Eagles lost last week against Washington. I think they're going to lay another egg here mm -hmm. against the rushing offense of the Colts. They're going to control the ball. And then the total, look, Chargers and uh, the Chiefs, the last four times these two teams have played, they have scored 51 or more. So if we hit that number again, we are in good shape. $25 on the over. We're both going to be pulling for the Colts uh, on Sunday. They're my spread bet pick here, Dave. I'm going to take Indianapolis against Philadelphia. What they were able to do, the 200-plus rushing yards. Jonathan Taylor, remember, at home this year, they already beat the Chiefs with Matt Ryan earlier in the season. The number's too big. I like Indy for 40 bucks. My next two picks, the same game. The Bears' money line against the Falcons. They've set an NFL record of at least 230 rushing yards in five straight games. I think they make it six against the bad Falcons defense. They went outright. And because of all that rushing, all that running, I like the under in the game here between these two teams. Atlanta wants to run the ball. The Bears want to run the ball. A lot of running clock. The under for 30 bucks in Bears-Falcons. All right. I, some interesting strategies there. We will see which one is the best after this weekend. We will air the results right here on next week's show. Hit up the FanDuel Sportsbook app now to place your bets before these games kick off. Coming up, you definitely want to stick around for our upset special picks of the week. Buffalo, uh, they're going to well, they're gonna go out there with a hangover. Vikings, they win this ball game 28-24, believe it or not. This is the week that the Washington Commanders and Heineke beat the oh. Eagles and give them their very first loss of the season. Yes, that was from last week's show. Cole picking the Vikings over the Bills on the money line at plus 180. And that's not all. You saw James taking the Commanders over the Eagles on that money line. Plus 390. Nailed two huge upsets for Week 10. Stick around here for their Week 11 picks. That's coming up next. Welcome back to more ways to win. Thanks for hanging with us here on FanDuel TV. We're going to focus right now on some money line money makers for you. It's upset alert time, and we already gave this. It was a spoiler alert because we're giving it the bet moji treatment, guys. Before we get to James and Cole's picks, how about a shout out for their picks last week? Vikings over the Bills. Cole nailed it. James you, Commanders Cole. over the Eagles. Of Both of them hit. Cole, <laughs> pressure's on you now. Let's hear your upset special for Week Eleven. Ooh. Well, pressure, bust pipes, it also makes diamonds. And today we're keeping it diamond nest because you're only as good as your last win, right? Of course. And uh, for the Jets, they're feeling pretty good because uh, last time around the block, they got a three-point W versus the Bills. That sent them into their bye week. They're refreshed, recuperated, ready to roll, and ready to take back a little bit of that pride that's burning inside from those New England Patriots because they haven't gotten a win from them. Since 2015, everyone's wardrobe looked a whole lot different. Now, the fifth-ranked defense, they're going to need to shut down the Patriot ground game because uh, if they take a page from the Colts, uh, that'll suit them uh, very nicely. Last week, Ramondre Stevens, Stevenson, the only running back in double digits. And uh, like you said, they're keeping receipts. Bobby Sal and company, you can book it. 24-21, gang green. They're going to get after it. Okay. <laughs> and no <Nope>. wow <laughs> wow no, no. Oh, oh. Oh. not feeling not feeling not happening, Dave. No. let's go hey, law of averages All right. you, you can't lose that many games in a All row right. <laughs> you would think they couldn't lose 10 in a row Cole. James That's explain. A 13. <laughs> 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 That's a 13 uh, not right, winning James. this game <laughs> all right so they're not winning yeah. that game but who is winning your game what's your pick yeah yeah, Cole, Cole got me distracted because I still I still don't even know what he's doing. <laughs> 13 in a row. This big-time defense for the Patriots is not going to happen. Zach Wilson in trouble. But my pick, right, is these Detroit Lions, right, going into MetLife and beating 
the New York Giants. And they are going to win three games in a row this season. I don't know when's the last time they run three games in a row, but it's going to happen, right? This defense taking the football away, played really good against the Green Bay Packers, coming off a comeback win against the Bears. I think the Giants' luck is going to run out. I like Jared Goff and these Detroit Lions to go in MetLife on the road and get a big time W. You realize you just did that yeah. whole thing with right. your emoji yeah. still on. Yeah. Because yeah. it's true. <laughs> oh, yeah. It. I'm sticking it right there. Again. That's still okay. for Cole. I can't take that off. That's still I mean, for Cole. <laughs> Uh, we're all over the place. Uh, awesome stuff, you guys. If you agree with Cole uh, or James, the poop emojis, whatever, do you. You do you. Just go to the sportsbook. Hop on the Fandle Sportsbook app right now and get that plus money before those games kick off on Sunday. As always, thanks for hanging with us here on More Ways to Win as we roll on with Week 11. Because in addition to betting on the games, you can also win part of a $10,000 prize pool just by answering a few questions about the games this week. And it's free to enter, and it's stuff you already know. To enter the GMC Sierra Mountain Climber Pick'em Contest, log on to FanDuel.com slash free slash contest slash GMC Mountain Climber before the early games kick off and answer questions about the matchups. The more you get right, the higher you move up the mountain. Fans who get every answer right will reach the summit and win a share of a $10,000 prize paid in site credit. Eyes on the prize here, team. Make sure to enter the free GMC Sierra Mountain Climber Pick'em Contest. And if you don't win this week, it is all good. You can enter every week of the NFL season. And as always, have fun and good luck. FanDuel offers a bunch of DFS contests as well where you can win thousands of dollars just by starting the right players. So right now, we're bringing you ringers well worth their high price tag. This is what we do every single week, and we bring in our ringer here, Jim Saunas, back with the goods. Jim, who's on your can't-miss list here in Week 11? Thanks, Lisa. My favorite game to stack in Week 11 is up in Minneapolis between the Cowboys and the Vikings, and that's where you find our first two studs for Week 11. Those two guys are CeeDee Lamb and Dalvin Cook. Lamb comes in at $8,100 and has a 30% target share in three games since Dak Prescott came back. That includes 64% of the Cowboys' downfield targets in those games. Lamb went bananas last week, and I think he could do it once again in a fun game this week. On the opposing side, as mentioned, I want to go to Dalvin Cook. $8,300 coming off a big game versus Buffalo where Cook showed he still has breakaway speed. Cook has had an 84% snap share in three of his past four games and is getting more work in the passing game of late as well. So Dalvin Cook and CeeDee Lamb, two fun ways to get exposure to that Cowboys Vikings game on Sunday. We'll round things out here with Saquon Barkley coming in at $9,700 facing off with the Lions. Don't got to say too much more than that. Barkley's had 160 or more yards from scrimmage in three separate games this year with 125 or more in two others as well. Barkley getting a ton of volume. He's had explosiveness as well. So Saquon Barkley at 97 really took to turn down despite the fact that game may not be quite as fun as a Vikings Cowboys game in Minneapolis on the whole. Awesome, Jim. Thank you. Set your lineup now at FanDuel.com and follow Jim on Twitter. Again, a reminder, his Twitter handle at Jim Saunas. And another reminder to check out his daily Covering the Spread podcast wherever you get your podcasts. All right, lots more to get to here on the show. Coming up, the MVP odds have moved significantly over the last few weeks. So who's a good value bet right now? We're here to answer that. That's next. Thanks for hanging with us here on More Ways to Win. We've talked about some spreads. We've talked about some money line bets and totals. There are also a bunch of fun futures bets listed at the FanDuel Sportsbook right now. So we're going to take a look at one of the most popular ones on the board, the regular season MVP. You see the odds right there on your screen. Patrick Mahomes, now the huge favorite, but check out a few sleepers on this board that could still make some moves, uh, you know, in the back half of this season. So, guys, let's focus here. and We're going to go around the horn to get your picks. Dave, you're going to start us off. Well, I mean, it's only plus 120, but I don't think Patrick Mahomes could lose this if he tried. I mean, he loses Tyreek Hill, leads the league in touchdowns and yards with the cast of characters that he has for his re wide receivers that are not Tyreek Hill. Give me Mahomes. I know it's chalky, but. Yeah, I, I, I don't see it neither, how Patrick Mahomes could, could, could lose this by the way he's playing. But if he does, that guy right under him, 
Tua Tungavailoa. He is playing at a high level. He is throwing the ball to everybody what really good quarterbacks do. I mean, he just coming out. He just step on the field. It's 300-fold touchdowns. He is going to push Patty Mahomes for this MVP. James, the problem with that is a lot of these voters seem to like Tyreek Hill in Miami over two. I think that would split the vote there. Somebody I like Lamar Jackson <laughs> for this reason. They have the softest schedule left. The weakest schedule win percentage is the Baltimore Ravens. If he's the reason why they go, say, 14-3, and three, mm. I think he's going to push Mahomes big time. And look at the odds there at 12-1 to one on Jackson, Cole. Yeah. Well, I'm going with Dave, going chalk right here. Patrick Mahomes leading the league in passing yards, passing touchdowns. Uh, what more can he do? Uh, he's a winner. I also have the Bears and the Rams winning this week. Just add them to the pool of winners as well. Had to make sure I got those in. Finally gave up on Derek Carr for MVP. Congrats. Oh, man. Okay, that was a while ago, Dave. That, that was, was like a few two weeks, weeks ago. ago. Why are you bringing yeah. up old stuff? <laughs> Oh, man. Why didn't we show the video of James picking the Cowboys over the Packers? Where was that video? You know what I'm saying? (laughs) You know, I did that on purpose. You know what I'm saying? Mind control. (laughs) You guys, yes. Just take them. Let them go. Uh, You guys, you know I'm going chalk, okay? So there it is. Uh, In addition to cashing in on the FanDuel Sportsbook app, you can also have fun, make some easy money playing the daily free game on the FanDuel Casino app. App is the reward machine. Daily free-to-play game gives players a chance up to win two grand. Make sure you hit it up right now. It's the FanDuel Casino app, and that is a wrap for us. We'll see you right back here next week.